everybody welcome back to my channel where I really don't know what direction we're gonna take this in but I'm gonna keep running with it for well as long as is necessary right now the thing that I need to do to recover my health is to put in I guess the extra mile so to speak and as you saw according to my forecasted workout today I should be resting so why am I starting out with another run on a Sunday no less when most people when many people I should say might instead just be taking it easy well here in San Antonio as you can see the tortillas the phase moon phase representation in tortilla format we have a lot of opportunity and over the years I've taken these opportunities and maybe in some cases had more than I was supposed to supposed to have had and that can take a toll especially if we don't put in any effort to offset the circumstances that result from excessive consumption so on today's show I guess what I want to talk about is as above so below with regard to excessive consumption in our natural environment can our natural environment reflect our excessive consumption I believe that it can so much so that nature itself in the form of the animals plants and circumstances around us will provide indicators sometimes those indicators will be subtle like spring wildflowers growing in midwinter like mass disappearances of pollinators like let's say bats bees butterflies and sometimes things will be less subtle like raging wildfires severe winter storms that now have tornadic activity bears showing up when people are tent camping some of these signs might seem easy to overlook if you're not made aware of those signs for most of us who reside in a place that we are tending to we should be able to recognize sometimes colder winters hotter summers the marginal extremes kind of growing further and further apart and if we recognize those things like for an example if it gets harder and harder for me to get out of bed without having aches and pains and if my rest deteriorates well there's a 
and as above, so below magnification. So if we have a lot of people doing great things, there's probably a lot of people doing some shady things. There's a balance. And all we have to do to think about keeping in balance, <clears throat> excuse me, is to focus. And if we're not focused, if we don't keep our eyes on the prize, we might find that without our, without our participation, there is a greater and greater occurrence of imbalance. So <clears throat> what should a light worker who has brought themselves into balance be focused on? Well, for the most part, if you want to find your purpose. I've heard a lot of great speakers talk about these subjects. And for many of us, we believe our purpose should be to capitalize on something that's happening. <clears throat> I've known many people who can make an extreme income really fast, usually off of the labor, including the labor of outside resources. Like if you come up with a trendy shirt like this, this one glows in the dark, by the way, all of these tortillas glow in the dark. If you come up with something trendy, a glow in the dark, cooler. If you come up with something that's cooler than the last big hit, well, it might take a lot of resources to produce these items. But for many of the conceptual people who only had the mere idea of producing these cooler items, in general, they're not the ones out there pulling the resources from the earth. There's a whole team of people involved. So if you have, just as an example, if you have a, a fetish or an affinity for drinking bottled water all of the time, drinking those nanoparticulates of plastic, and if you have an affinity as above, so below for consuming that over and over, well, that big island of plastic in the sea is gonna to continue to grow. And the island of plastic with our, within our own microbiomes will continue to grow. Again, if left unchecked. So, in honor of offering hope, because there is hope, we have plenty of people who also want to do the right thing and who would if monetarily it made sense to. When we start thinking about sense, we shouldn't be thinking about dollars and cents. <laughs> we really need to focus on what is best for everybody, for everything all around us. We want to be all inclusive, but sometimes we don't want to put the brakes on to stop and see the wake that we're leaving behind. Just as an example. And it can be difficult to stop, especially when our comfort zone permits us encourages us 
to constantly do the wrong thing or the more destructive thing. So we can get to where we're going in an accelerated manner, whether we're going in one direction or the other. But sometimes it makes more sense to slow things down and observe. And so today, even though you might not have signed up for this, I want to go into the aspect of spirituality, religion. And I want to suggest that many, if not all religions, talk greatly about fasting, about slowing down, stopping, doing without. But not many of those concepts are repeated when we consider our fathers. Just as a weird convoluted merging of concepts, even the Our Father in the Bible talks about give us this day our daily bread. It doesn't ever touch on the fact of maybe we need to stop and fast. Even though if you read the Bible from which the Our Father probably is attributed, there is reference that almost assumes that we are going to be fasting, that we are going to be doing without. And so I kind of think in the long run, no pun intention, this is a no pun intended, this is a short run, but in the long run, it seems as if fasting is a necessity. And if you've been struggling having conversations with friends and family, loved ones, whatever you want to call it, acquaintances, co-workers, neighbors, if you've been talking in hostile ways behind the back of these people that you're speaking of, there might be something called anger within. Because when we're angry, that's the quickest motivational way to get someone to do something fast. Someone is quick to put up their fists, but how many people are quick to discuss an entire story with someone by listening first before striking out? How many people? I believe there's a variance. We're right now hitting one mile. 13 minutes and 39 seconds. I believe there's a variance when it comes to the amount of peaceful people versus the amount of people who might be a little bit more related to the entity that wants to kill, steal, and destroy. So for that reason, on this particular Sunday, I wanted to multitask in my Saucony Ride 15 shoes that are red. Sunday starts out with red. <clears throat> Red, orange, yellow, blue, green, indigo, violet. Seven days of the week. There's a lot of people that wanna give you a seven day vegan challenge. That will impact your life positively. If you're looking to, if you're looking to save If you're looking to save effort, because when you eat plant-based, like 100% plant-based, for an example, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, bananas, things that are self-contained that you can just eat as is, 
you'll lose weight, you'll lose body aches, you'll sleep better, your internal system will cleanse itself. If you do it for seven days, that's one thing because every day your cellular components are restructured. It's not like your fingernails grew and that's it. It's not like some things that are a little bit more theoretically permanent like our teeth that grow in and that's it. Our skin, our hair, our internal organs from where the aging process really does begin are all rebirthed out of new cells that are brought to us by the miracle of our gut biome. And if our gut biome is unhealthy, it's harder and harder for it to process foods. If we eat processed foods, it's harder and harder to get any nutrients out of them. If we eat meat all the time, or even worse, the meat substitutes like beyond meat, you know, and I can't believe it's not butter type stuff. When we eat the substitutes, we might improve the taste and flavor of certain things that we didn't think we would enjoy in the past but we might still have eliminated the nutrients that go with that. So on this channel, I do talk about nature. I do talk about balance. I do talk about spirituality, religion. They're not entirely different. It's just the approach that we take to communicate with one another is either taken from a point of student, teacher. I'm the student, you know, you guys are my teachers. So I'm speaking in front of my teachers who are either going to correct me because I'm doing something wrong or without even knowing it, they're going to encourage me by allowing me to do this in a greater and greater frequency and thereby we will have raised each other's vibrational frequency together. So I hope that you're taking the steps necessary to regain your own health and to share your own learnings on your own channel while we have these platforms available to us. And I hope that you're safe. I hope that you're not anxious. And I hope that you're having an amazing day. Until next time, peace, love, and all that old school stuff.